Hello, my name is Emma, and today I am talking about BookCon 2016. Now, I have quite a lot of BookCon and BEA related videos coming within the next few weeks. I have some uploaded already and some to still uploaded, film and edit and whatnot. So originally I wasn't planning on doing a whole wrap up just for BookCon, but I've been going to BookCon since 2014. It has been such a big part of my reading, booktubing, and just general life for the past three years that when I had such an amazing BookCon again, I couldn't not make a video about it. So while I have things like a montage and a haul and just other videos going up. I wanted to do like kind of like a talk through video of how my actual book con went. I do have two videos almost identical to this about my experiences for book con 2014 and 2015. So if you're interested in seeing those, the link for those videos will be in the description. But today we're going to be talking about 2016. So Saturday, May 14th was book con. I woke up at two o'clock in the morning because nothing on this earth was going to stop me from meeting Cassandra Clare. Now as a book con veteran for the last two years, I knew how it worked, so I knew I had to get there really, really early, especially if I wanted to meet an author. So I got up, 2 a.m., three hours of sleep, not a care in the world except for getting my wristband for Cassandra Clare. I went with Megan from Megan Precourt because she was the only person who was insane enough to go with me. I was meant to go with Kelly from Kelly's Bookspill and her sister Sarah, but I walked into the room at like 3.30 in the morning and I was like, uh, we should probably leave here like around like 5-ish if we want to get there on time. And Kelly like welcome was like, no. So they ended up not coming, which is totally reasonable because, again, I am literally insane when it comes to Cassandra Clare and the Mortal Instruments, so I wasn't really expecting anyone else to come with me. I was originally expecting to go alone. But by 3.30 in the morning, I'm like, we have already weeded out the weak ones. Just kidding. But by 5 o'clock in the morning, we were out and on our way. Megan and I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts to get breakfast because we knew it was going to be a very long day. We needed caffeine and whatnot. And so I sent out a tweet just asking, like, if anyone's at BookCon, like, what are the lines like? How many people are there? And so Brandon from Brandon the Book Addict tells me he's like a 13 person in line and like there's aren't many people after him and I'm like oh my god I'm gonna make Santa Claire for the third time this this is gonna happen today's gonna go smooth I'm gonna get my wristband it's gonna be all great as we're waiting for our food to come out he also tweets me but the Cassandra Claire tickets are sold out and I'm like so for a moment I'm just trying to process everything and I'm like, no, they can't be sold out. Like, they didn't sell these online. There's only 13 people there. How are they going to have a signing with only 13 people? It's going to be like an hour long. They have to have wristbands left. Then I get angry. <laughs> and so while I'm like having a freak out in the middle of Dunkin' Donuts, I'm like, Megan, you need to call him now. <laughs> and so before she can call him, I tweet him, are you joking? Like, are you serious? And so the tweet back that I get to that is that emoji that's just like, so obviously he's kidding. After that, I get very mad at myself because I'm a very gullible person. You could really convince me of anything really, really easily. And then I'm like, you know what? That was really good. He got me real good. It was a good start in the morning for me to go out of this laughing. But after that whole fiasco, we were on our way to BookCon. We get to the convention center at like 5.15, 5.20ish, and we hop in line with Brandon, and it's really not that bad. There were quite a few people in line, and so they didn't open the actual ticket counter where you can get the wristbands for signings and actually line up for the event until 8 a.m. So we waited there for quite some time. I actually had a ton of subscribers come up to me like on the line. They locked up, and we talked and took photos and it was a really, really great way to start the day. I was honestly shocked at the amount of people that were like, it is six o'clock in the morning and I want to meet Emma Books and that's going to make my day. I just thought it was really cool. I was tired. I had already started losing my voice. You can still kind of hear it in my voice that I can't really talk normally, but it was a really great time and it was such a great start to the day. We had waited. We played heads up. Sandy from Sandy Reads a Lot joined us and we we're just having a good time waiting for some wristband. And so then the door opens up. We're allowed to go get a wristband. I get my wristband in like three minutes and I'm like, oh my God, like this is really happening. I have my wristband. I'm I'm going to meet Cassandra Clare. So again, it was 8 o'clock. We still had to wait two hours until the actual show floor opened. So we were just sitting on the floor talking. We we're talking about BookTube and just having a really good conversation with Brandon and Megan. And so Brandon runs off to the Sarah G. Mass signing at 11 so that he can get his book signed for a friend. And then I get in line at the Owl Crate booth. I worked with Owl Crate previously and working again with them from May. And I'm really, really excited about it. I got to meet Corinna, who is the owner of Owl Crate, which is really, really nice. Their booth was super cool because not only was it like super established, like it was the nicest looking booth at BookCon. They had had like a screen playing all of the unboxings from booktubers that they've done which I thought was so cool but they had to spin the wheel and you won stuff and it was a really great way to start off the day. So after that entrance I had met up with a few people like Kelly from Kelly's Book Spell. I saw Bangity Bangs there. I also think Monica from She Might Be Monica met up with this at that point. Everyone started piling in around 10 because that's when it really opened and everyone was like I'm not getting up that early. So like Michael from Michael Book Lion, Sarah from Sarah Without an Age, Whitney from Witty Novels. Just like all of booktube was there but I had a really exciting interview at 11. 
11 so I had to go to that. So through Penguin I had set up an interview with one of my all-time favorite authors Rochelle Mead which is just nerve-wracking within itself. I had met up with her before there was an interview with Elizy Books that she did before that and so we just hung out until that was done and I interviewed her and it went so well. Oh my god. I thought it went so so well. I met Michelle Mead previously like three times very quickly in passing at signings and stuff so she didn't remember me but like I just thought the interview went so so well. That'll definitely be uploaded really soon but I was so happy just like all the stress for the weekend was mostly done at that point because all I had to worry about was Cassandra Clare after it but I'm just I'm so unbelievably happy that an interview with one of my all-time favorite authors went perfect. I just... <sighs> Did that really happen? Like, did that really, really happen? <laughs> and of course, the wonderful Jenna from Gender Click K was there to do all of, like, the filming equipment. She let me borrow her camera and her mic, and just, Jenna was amazing. Jenna was, like, the behind-the-scenes queen of BA and BookCon, and so I'll actually, this is, like, a little self-promo for Jenna. She took amazing, amazing photos for the weekend. Like, almost a thousand photos are in this album, so I'm gonna leave that album of all of the photos that Jenna took of all the booktubers for the weekend, because it came out beautiful. After that, like, everyone I had previously mentioned, we all got lunch together for some really great conversation and some really expensive convention center food. After lunch, I feel like we literally did nothing until Cassandra Clare. I think we just walked around a lot, but I really don't have any concrete memories of what we did at that time. BookCon is honestly like a really, really chill day unless you have specific authors or panels that you're going through. So I feel like everyone else did like a lot of sitting around all day, whereas I am like buzzing because I am meeting Cassandra Clare in a couple of hours and I just can't contain my excitement. In those few three hours, I did a lot of walking around. Like I stopped by Sasha and Natasha from a book utopia and Tashopolis who were doing a signing with JD Neto and they were just signing a bunch of things that line was crazy oh my god since when did booktube get that gigantic that there is just a line going all around the convention center to meet two of them again I had met a lot of subscribers at that time like we were just walking around and people would stop me to take photos and then as soon as I was done taking one photo another person wanted a photo it was just a really really crazy experience the end of this video will probably explain why this number is so big but I think I talked to and took photos with like 50 subscribers at BookCon alone not to mention all of BEA which is just mind-blowingly amazing I just had so much fun interacting with all these people and I just I can't contain my excitement for events like this just because it is so so much fun So fast forward a couple of hours of just walking around talking with booktubers talking with subscribers and viewers and whatnot We are getting ready to line up for Cassandra Clare now for some reason Someone in the convention thought it was okay to tell people that like if you line up more than 15 minutes early for your sign-in We're cutting your wristband. My immediate thought is so you're gonna grab my hand and cut off my wristband against my will so that I can't be my author because I'm just, I'm waiting in line for her. I don't know. It was really, really stupid. Obviously, no one's wristband got caught, but we were kind of like in the area. We started an official line or unofficial line at like 2.15, and that was when I was with Megan, and we had met a couple of other people there. And so there's just a big line that like just was blocking the area because everyone was so excited to meet Cassandra Clare. So I'm glad we lined up really early because they were like, oh, you can't line up at 2.45, but at 2.15, they were already letting us into like the little dividers, and I'm like, oh my god, she's behind this curtain. Another really great thing that BookCon did this year instead of previous years is while the first year was really great because you didn't have to buy any of the books so that was like A++ for BookCon. The second year you had to wait online at a bookstore to buy all of the books and again buying the book didn't necessarily guarantee the signing if you didn't get there in time and that line last year for the BookCon store was like four hours long so everyone missed their signings. It was a hot mess. What they did this year is when you got online you bought a book at the table if you had to buy a book for that specific signing and then you joined the actual signing line and that worked out really really well too. I wish I had known that for Cassandra Clare you could also bring books from home. I thought you could only buy one book and get that one book signed. So I ended up buying three of her books. Um, let's just reiterate the fact that I have every single edition in English of all of her books and I had to buy more because I didn't have any. So I bought three new books for this signing but it was worth it because I met her in their sign now. So. It went really well. Another thing that was a little disappointing about buying the books is that they only had the new paperback editions of her books. I really wanted the hardcovers because it was like, I can just swap out the hardcovers. Like, it's not a big deal. I want all my hardcovers signed and that would have been okay. But they only had the paperbacks. But still, it's a signed book, so I went for it anyways. So for that signing, I ended up buying City of Ashes, City of Fallen Angels, and City of Heavenly Fire, all by Cassandra Clare. I thought it was fine because I have City of Bones, City of Glass, City of Lost Souls signed, and I do have City of Heavenly Fire signed, but it's not in the right place, and I wanted it properly signed. So we just went with it. It was worth it. So I had gotten online to meet her, and I just had a really good conversation with her as always. I love, love, love meeting Cassandra Clare. Again, it's my third time talking to her. I finally got to show her my 
my tattoo. If you haven't been on my channel for a long time, I went to a signing of hers in October and I'll leave the vlog for that below. But I had asked her to write out words have the power to change this in her handwriting and I got it tattooed. I think you can see it here. This is the tattoo and it's in her handwriting and it's perfect. It was my favorite tattoo in the entire world. I was really, really excited to show it to her. So as I'm like showing her all of my Mortal Instruments tattoos, um, she was taking photos of them on her personal cell phone. So I'm like, hey, my shoulder is on my favorite author of all times, phone. What is life? So yeah, we were just talking about that and talking about how much I love her books and I just, I feel like that moment is just such a blur to me because it's so overwhelmed, but it's like the good kind of blur where I'm just like, <sighs> that happened. <laughs> so she signed City of Ashes, City of Fallen Angels, and City of Heavenly Fire, so that makes it all six books of the Mortal Instruments series are signed, different editions, different signings. I don't really care because I have all six of my all-time favorite series signed by the author. So I had met Cassandra Clare. It went amazing. So all the anxiety from the day was over. Just this day went so perfectly up until this point. So the only thing that I had planned for the rest of the day was the book explosion panel. So I got in there really, really early. My original plan was to sit in the room that the panel was in because they didn't clear you out every time there was a new panel. So there were two panels before and I was planning on sitting there. But Michael, who like I hadn't seen all day because he was helping Kat and Christine because they couldn't go out in public early would get mobbed said that they needed coffee so I was like all right I'll go on a coffee run for them so apparently the convention center Starbucks thought it was a good idea to close at four when the convention doesn't end until like six so we had to go all the way to the Hyatt which is the hotel that's connected to the convention center it was like a 10 minute walk and we spent another like 20 minutes trying to change everyone's order so we could get them some caffeine to go through this panel and the whole ordeal probably took like 30 minutes but it was quite an adventure and I still had a fun time like scrambling all over the place with Michael so we get to their green room where they're sitting and waiting for the panel and they're like, oh, like, it's too close. You guys can just walk out with us. So we sat around with Jesse, Kat, Christine, Sasha, Natasha. Afterwards, Maureen and Jenna came in. We were just all hanging. We did this little pump up, like, book explosion on three kind of thing. And it was just a really great time to spend time with all these people. So we ended up walking in through the back with everyone. And Jesse, Kat, and Christine did their panel. And it was fantastic. I don't know if this panel is going to be uploaded in full into YouTube. But what I really liked about this panel is that they took the first few minutes to just talk with each other. They were just talking to themselves and their booktube channels. I thought it was a really good idea because they got all the questions that are like constantly recycled in all of their panels out of the way like right away so they were talking about like when they started and how it changed their life and like their whole process they got all of the good concrete answers out of the way for all the fans to come up and ask them questions during the Q&A. Now the thing about these booktube panels is I've been to two or three previously at like various conventions and at BookCon last year and they've all been relatively small and contained and while it's been growing and growing each year this one was absolutely the craziest. They had a giant room. It was filled to the back with people standing up. It was just so unbelievably packed and like I really started crying at the beginning of the panel just because I'm just so happy for the three of them and I'm just so happy for this community and I just cannot believe to the heights that it's grown in such a short period of time and I'm getting emotional just thinking about it but it was a lot to take in just seeing that many people there but to be a part of the community and it was so wonderful. And so after the panel, Jesse, Kat, and Christine are standing up online and Sasha and Natasha join them so that they can all just stand in line and like each subscriber can go down the line and talk to everyone and take pictures and get things signed. And so Michael comes up to me and Whitney and is like, they're asking for more people to join the line for people who might want to take pictures with. Come up and join us. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like this isn't my place. I'm not meant to be there. And Michael's like, Emma, shut the fuck up and come online. So I get up to go online, and it's like me, Whitney, Zoe, and Maureen standing at the end of the line. But a lot of people actually came up to me, and I just, I don't know if I can put this experience into words because it was just so unbelievably crazy. At some point in this line, it just hit me that I am standing online next to the people that inspired me to the channel as subscribers are coming down to take photos with them and with me and I used to be that person like two years ago at BookCon I met these people for the first time and I was the person that stood online to meet them and take photos with them and talk to them and get things signed and I just I've it's changed things are different and it's crazy I just I don't know if I can put it into words how surreal that experience is looking back at these past two book cons and saying I was a viewer when I first went to book con I had 500 subscribers when I met these people and now I'm online and people are coming to meet me at 25,000 almost and I just I can't even express it <laughs> I just talked to so many people that told me how much they loved my channel and how much they enjoyed my videos and how much I've helped them and I just it put it into the perspective that this is a massive part of my life and my life has changed so much since starting this channel and it can never go back to the way it was I had this lovely girl named Kat whose dad and herself came up to me just to thank me for getting her into hooping and oh my god this girl is so good at hoop dancing she rivals me I'm just so proud and every time I think about that experience I literally I just start crying I 
I have made an impact on somebody and I've convinced them to try something that has become a part of me and has helped me so much and I'm watching that in reality be transferred onto someone else just because I decided to post 15 second videos of it on Instagram and I just, I de <laughs> I'm really overwhelmed. It's putting everything into perspective and I just, I can't even wrap my head around all of the things that are happening right now. Just gotta collect myself, I finish this video, I can do this. I can get through this without like actually bawling like I have the past week, like it'll be okay. <laughs> I have a ton of photos saved from people tagging me in them because they met me at Bacon and just wanted to share that experience. They're all saved on my computer and when I'm like 60 years old and I have a family and kids and grandkids, I'm gonna look back on this and be like, I made a difference to someone and that's really really amazing. To top off the end of this crazy, crazy night, I have two books that I was given throughout BookCon. The first being from the lovely Maureen at Maureen Kiwi, who gave me a late birthday present that is The Fangirl's Guide to the Galaxy by Sam Maggs, which is like a handbook for geek girls. So it's just a little cute novelty book about all things bookish and nerdy and girly and geeky and related. And I just, I'm really, really excited for this. I've seen this book all over the place and I thought it was just such a cute little book to get for my birthday. So thank you so, so much, Maureen. I'm so, so happy I got to see you again. And that was just another really great top on this end of this perfect day. And so then a lovely subscriber named Kate, who I met over this experience, who was just so adorable and sweet and kind. I'm so glad I talked to her so much throughout BookCon. She decided that she wanted to give me The Graceling by Kristen Cashore, um, just because she thought I would really like it, and that means a lot to me. So thank you so, so much, Kate. I'm so happy I got to meet you, and we got to talk a lot, and just thank you so much for this book. What I can gather from this book is about this world where this girl, Katza, is able to kill a man with her bare hands since she was a young girl, and she's the niece of the king, but forced to work is like the king's thug, and so basically it's all about her being sent out to kill this person and meeting this boy, and you know things happen. I have seen the Graceling like all over the place. This cover is really really gorgeous and that look at that sword is so shiny and the back is shiny and it sounds like it's gonna be a really good book that I think I will really really enjoy. So thank you so so much Kate for giving me this book. I love you. Mwah! I'm so happy for all the things that happened at BookCon. It was just such an amazing day. I just had the most wonderful time. I have had such crazy experiences the past three BookCons and each of them have been so unique and so amazing and I love them each in their own way. But I think BookCon 2016 was definitely the favorite so far. I just had so many great experiences. I hung out with so many friends. Just a whole circle of booktubers was there and I just, I can't put into words how much this weekend has meant to me. I would love to know if you were at BookCon and what authors you met, what your experience was like. If we met, definitely leave a comment below so I can check out your channel. I just, I, I don't even know how to end this video just because I'm really overwhelmed with all of the amazing things that happened at BookCon. If you're going next year when it's in my city, New York City, I will obviously be there of course and I would love to meet you guys but that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new one bye